Thank you for watching and subscribing. Filming and editing these videos takes a considerable amount of time and effort. Please consider supporting the channel through Patreon. Well, good morning. It is around 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday, February 19th in San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. You know, recently the weather here in Southern California has been so beautiful. Today is forecast to be a high of 74 and sunny, and I just keep thinking that I should be sailing. So today we're going to take a break from the usual and launch a sailing dinghy that I built in my garage uh, from towards the end of 2019 through 2020. And I built this dinghy out of quarter inch regular plywood. It's covered in fiberglass mat and epoxy. It's a nesting dinghy. And some of you may be familiar with the chameleon dinghy. That's kind of a popular nesting dinghy that people make at home. And I wrote to the designer for the plans long ago, and he never got back to me. But I was so interested in trying to build something my own, uh, design something on my own, that I kind of wanted to make my own version of it. Now, the difference between mine and a chameleon is a chameleon has a V-shaped bottom, and mine is a flat bottom. And I like that because it's kind of easier to get over reefs where you might only have a foot of clearance below you. So I designed this myself on pencil and graph paper, and I built um, some paper models, and then I just started building it in the garage. This dinghy features two buoyancy boxes in the stern, which will keep the boat afloat even if it's totally flooded. A large buoyancy box up forward, which I installed a large white hatch in. It's got a dagger board slot and a dagger board I built out of wood, a rudder I built out of wood, and that's a PVC tube at the top of it that the tiller just slides right into. I built the mast and the spar as well out of wood. She's overbuilt and very strong, and that's why she's a bit too heavy. My thinking when building it was that it'd be a fun boat to teach my kids to sail on, and if I happen to buy a bigger boat in the future, it could be a dinghy for the boat. It could, um, it's a nesting design, so it should be able to fit on deck upside down. The disappointment in the end is that being made of quarter inch plywood, it just came out so heavy. And that was what really disappointed me and led me to uh, build this boat out of a foam core, knowing it'd be much lighter. Now this isn't a dinghy, I'm not gonna have to haul it on top of the car. But still, I didn't like how heavy it ended up. Now I'll tell you a secret. I finished this boat in the summer of 2020, but it has never actually been to the water. Um, for a long time I was confused about how to get it to any water because I didn't have a trailer and I could put it on top of the car if I bought or made a roof rack, but I would need some help to do that. And again, it's just the problem of it being too heavy. But now finally I've decided to enlist the help of a local friend and we're gonna load it up onto the car rack that I made in the previous episode where I went to get the carbon fiber mast. So we're gonna put it on top of the car and take it down to the San Diego Bay and see what we can do with it. But first, this morning, in the next couple hours, I need to build a sail out of a tarp. Obviously nothing fancy, but enough to get us out on the water today. I've cut out a rough sail shape, and I'm gonna fold over the edges and glue them, and put in brass grommets. Thank you. 
Look who we're racing. <laughs> we're in front of them. All right, it is 7 p.m. and we're back home now. Got my cup of coffee to warm up. Uh, it's actually really nice out there. We had a blast, had a great time. The boat actually sailed really well. Um, the dagger board worked well. We were, seemed to point up into the wind great. And the rudder I made worked very nice. Um, in case any of you were curious, the boat overall is 10 feet, two inches long and it's four feet wide. And of course, as you saw, it's a nesting dinghy, so it breaks into two pieces, the bow fitting into the stern section. It attaches together with four stainless bolts. Here's a map for basically where we went after we launched from Shelter Island on the San Diego Bay. It was pretty fun. We put it together on a lawn there, right next to a big group of uh, some Hawaiian folks who were having like barbecue and everybody was very curious about the, the boat and how it came together from two pieces. And of course we drew attention with this tarp sail. And out on the water, um, people were sailing by, taking pictures, taking video. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I built this boat over the winter of 2019, 2020. And at that time, my idea was kind of to have a nesting dinghy for maybe a 35 foot big boat. and even if it might be a couple years before I get this 35 foot big, fo big boat, I could take this to the water and teach the kids how to sail on it and mess around. Um, but in the end, as I've mentioned, it just ended up a bit too heavy. And of course, at the same time while I was building it, um, my whole philosophy about cruising started to change from needing this bigger boat down to having more interest in the mi mini cruiser types, boats, under 20 feet. I'm a pretty practical guy. I consider myself a minimalist, so I don't know if I can justify having two boats. Once I have the new boat built, that's going to uh, meet the needs I have to go sailing and for showing the kids how to sail. So I don't really know what the future is for this boat. Should I give it away? Should I try to acquire a quality sail for it and keep it where it is in the closet for future sailing. Doesn't really take up much room. Just the big downside is that I need a buddy going with me to help me lift it onto the car and take it off and carry it down to the beach. Please comment your thoughts and let me know. But yeah, I think if I really wanted a little sailing dinghy in addition to the mini cruiser I'm building, I might buy something that's just lighter or kind of a portable boat that I could fit on top of the car easily all by myself. If you'd like to support the mini cruiser build I'm doing, please consider joining Patreon. There's the lowest tier that starts at, I think only $4 per month. And with that, you get some additional perks. Just follow the link in the description to see everything that each tier includes. All right, well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hi. Mr. Bordellis, make all preparations. We're getting on the way. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Home, get back to your station, or I'll have you shot from a mutineer. Well, shoot something!